Hi everyone, this is Jeffrey Ong. Today I'm going to talk about Beginner's Guide to Property Investing. Recently, I've published a book together with Dr. Wealth about the Beginner's Guide to Property Investing when I talk about B4R strategy. That's right, B stands for buy. The 4R stands for refurbishment, rent, and remortgage or refinance to extract your equity. Finally, recycle your money to buy the next one. So, if you are a newbie, what do you do? There are several steps to this. First, is to choose a country. Well, if you will, wherever you live, you should buy your own home in your own country first. You want the security of having your own home and not be uh, at the mercy of your landlords. Well, I rent my house at times because I like a change of environment or I want to shift to a place where it is very near to my kid's school. And maybe that area is not suitable for ownership because it's, the prices are sky high. So I just rent it. That is called rent investing. But in general, most people prefer to own their own home. Number two, you need to buy a second home for rental. Otherwise, you're, you're going to live on your own home for capital gains and uh, there is no rental income. You can't retire because there's nothing to sell. You have only got one house. Actually, your first house is always called. It's not called an investment. It's actually a liability according to Robert Kiyosaki because it doesn't generate any cash flow. Until the day you die, you still need a place to stay unless you liquidate, take out the capital gains, the proceeds, and then rent. Right? So you need a second home for rental. It could be in your own country, it could be another country. And if you choose another country, we have the ability to help you if it is in UK. Now, number three, get a mortgage appraisal. Before you do anything, before you buy your second home or your first home, get a mortgage appraisal. Find out how much you can borrow. Then that sets your budget. There's no point looking at a $3 million house when you can only afford to borrow half a million, there's so much money to put in down payment, right? So get a mortgage approval, appraisal, how much you can borrow. Number four, gauge the rent. If you are investing, understand that area. If it's property guru in Singapore or iProperty in Malaysia or Zillow in the US or Zoopla or Right Move in the UK, you need to know the comparables in that vicinity, that postcode, that one quarter mile radius. What is the rent likely to be? And that is a gross rent. Don't just look at a gross rent. You must minus off all potential costs, such as agent fees to manage your properties. If you're covering utilities, assume there's 5% vacancy rate, assume there's 5% of annual rent, on the maintenance now at the end of it you get the net rent the net rent must preferably cover your mortgage ex repayment why is that so important well the if your mortgage repayments on a monthly basis is more than your rent the more homes that you buy the worse it gets and before that before long when you own your third property you're in a black hole every month so it's not sustainable. You want multiple properties for retirement. In fact, my course is talking about 10 properties in 10 years. You need 10 properties in the first 10 years. After that, the next 10 years, you can sell off some of the properties or you stop remortgaging or refinancing and let the capital gains grow. And that's where your cash flow build up. And that's where you get rich. Before you retire, you might want to sell down some homes and then pay off the loans of the existing homes that you choose to keep so that it becomes unencumbered. It depends on your strategy. It depends on taxes as well. Well, some countries have a lot of inheritance tax, so it doesn't make sense to, to be unencumbered. You continue to borrow. Uh, some, company, some countries allow you to draw an income and there's very little income tax. So it depends. It could be in dividends. It could be in rental income. Population must be increasing. I've heard a lot of people talk about Japan, Japan, especially in Asia. Well, is the population growing? Take, for example, Osaka. It used to be a 17 million population. 
let's say 50 years ago and today it's only about 9 million it's been declining by 0.24 percent per year in population there's a lot of abandoned homes in in uh, japan because it's a growing population so it is very challenging to make money in a declining population and there lies that issue so i prefer to buy in a country where the con- the population is at least growing a healthy 0.5 to 1 percent there must be a inflow of immigration so that there's the population remains young and there's more people working to pay taxes to support the older people. And I think in Japan, sooner or later, one worker paying tax will be supporting two retirees in the not too distant future. And what happens to a country? It's going to be a demographic time bomb. Lastly, the rule of law must be strong. That is very important, of course. You don't want to buy a home. And I've heard horror stories of people buying homes in Asia. Uh, whether it be India or Philippines, where they buy a home and the title can actually be sold twice. Can you believe it? So the lawyer may not be that uh, honest. I'm not saying all lawyers are dishonest, but they are crooked ones. So the rule of law is, must be strong. If you get into trouble, uh, tenants do not pay, can you collect your rent? Uh, can you evict them? Will you lose your home? Will it be expropriated in the worst case scenario? They end up with nothing. And of course, there are other rules like does a country have earthquake? And if it has earthquake, what do you do? Does the insurance cover it? So these are the question marks. So if the insurance cover it, right, in the case of Japan, I would rather buy a house rather than a, a block of flats or apartment. Because when if there is damage after an earthquake, even if the building is there, it could be damaged beyond habitation so what happens you have to top up money or the, if there's fire damage so what happens you have to claim on insurance to pay for the damage now the insurance may not even cover that total amount what if it fails to cover and what if some people in the block are uninsured then what happens now if you have a keen interest in our property value investing course please visit the link to our course website below there, you will find detailed information about our course modules and have the opportunity to enroll. By joining our course, you gain access to our exclusive course chat group where I will personally address your inquiries and provide guidance. Additionally, we will be organizing periodic webinars to further assist you along your learning journey. Rest assured, we are committed to supporting you to the best of our abilities. Titanium Synergy is a joint venture between Josh and myself. Josh, who is based in the UK, specializes in assisting individuals in finding properties within the UK market. He offers mentorship and guidance to help you build a robust property portfolio. We would love to have you join us on this journey. If you enjoy our videos and find them useful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media for regular updates.